bit ahead of time. So, hi Leila. So Leila is um, a gut health specialist with an expert background in marketing. And today she is talking about how to attract clients digitally and she's bringing all her expertise in running large scale campaigns for radio, tube, TV and uh, advertising to show exactly how the same approaches can be used to create effective marketing on a shoestring budget. Um, she can also help you um, to figure out what your best niche is to advertise and it probably isn't what you think. Um, how to do effective and cost-effective Facebook ads. So get ready with your questions. Leila, over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, I've just lost my uh, presentation page, but I have found it. So thank you for that lovely introduction. Now, my pleasure. Where are you? Okay, share screen. And I need to share this screen. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay, lovely. Let's go then. So... <clears throat> Thank you for bearing with me, everybody. So, yeah, so basically I'm here to talk about marketing on a shoestring uh, budget. And the reason that I uh, wanted to do that is because before I got into the health sector, I was a sales PR and marketing professional for about 15 years. Um, and that's all I did for 15 years, every single day, all day. I was handling large budgets, small budgets, no budgets, you know, handling lots of different things. And then uh, I had a baby. And then she became very, very sick when she was about three months old. And then I started to investigate uh, about different health solutions. And I got into the health world. I qualified as a herbalist and a naturopath. And now I'm studying, um, I'm doing an MSc in nutritional therapy. And what I noticed through that journey is that practitioners, so people that are offering a health service of some kind or a health solution, they agonize a lot more about their marketing and what they can say and what they should say or shouldn't say a lot more than anybody that you'll ever meet in kind of like a corporate world. So the people that are selling, you know, Red Bull are so much more comfortable than practitioners that are actually producing something or providing something that really will make a quite a, a life changing difference to a person. Um, and there's a lot of agonizing and, uh, you know, what, what is the right way to go? Uh, can I say this? Can I say that? A lot of, lot of problems around health claims. Um, and so I was like, well, if I take my understanding of what being a practitioner is and what the experience of being a practitioner is, plus the marketing experience that I have, then maybe I can actually uh, teach practitioners. I can provide practitioners with, with the information that they need to agonize less and get better results in their marketing if marketing is an issue it is something that's of importance to them so what does uh what does a basic simple marketing campaign look like so basically this is coming from the perspective that you are a sole practitioner uh and you survive on seeing clients maybe you're getting referrals maybe you have leaflets on a website something like that and you want to either raise your price, which means that you need to get an influx of new people, or you need uh, more customers because you're, um, you're not as fully booked as you would like to be. So what I've learned is that by implementing a very simple kind of lead generation structure, uh, you can achieve those goals. Um, and what it looks like ultimately, so what I'm going to break down into detail at the moment is this. What we need, what we do is you create something that people can exchange their information for. This is called a lead magnet. So you might, um, it might be a free something or the other. It might be a piece of information. Um, you then take that uh, lead magnet and you promote it on different social media channels. And there's a very easy way of doing that. Um, and then when you capture their information, you then send them email newsletters and then you configure your website to retarget them on Google if they're searching for things. And then you, what pops out at the end is a client. So this is like a very, very basic starter client generation funnel. It's called a marketing funnel because we take, we take a, a big, big group of people and then we filter them into, into clients at the bottom. So 
how do we do this? So one thing that I noticed that practitioners agonize about is what, what should I be marketing? What should I be marketing? You know, oh, and, and then they either put themselves onto the microscope and they make all sorts of conclusions. Like I've sat there with, you know, hormonal health experts that are wondering if anyone cares that they're an expert in hormonal health or they wonder if their niche is too boring or they want, they're trying to guess what the audience is most, most re reactive and responsive to. And actually, the best way of knowing your strength is not to look in yourself, because you have absolutely no idea how the outside world sees you. And this is the blind spot when it comes to marketing as well. It's what do people recommend you for? When somebody is having a, a health experience or any other experience, at what point of their thinking do you come into their mind? Do people refer anxious people to you? Do people say, oh, you know, so-and-so is really good at this. You should go and have a chat with him or her. So that is the lowest hanging fruit. That bit where you do really, really well to such a degree that people refer to you for that specific thing. That is the thing that you lead with. That is the thing that you should advertise around. And that is your niche because that's the thing that's going to bring people to you. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you're stuck with that. It just means that that is the easiest way to get a lead generation tool going. And then once you've got that lead generation going, then you can branch out into other things. And so you're not stuck in your niche. This is another, another thing that I hear practitioners say like, oh, if I become the eczema expert, then what if I want to do something else? What if I find it boring? It's no problem. You generate your uh, baseline income with your uh, easy topic, your th the thing that you're most good at, the thing that you get the most referrals for already. And also the thing that you can talk about. So if you're a brand new practitioner and you haven't got any clients at all at the moment, then what you need to do is think of the thing that you can talk about forever. So imagine yourself sitting in a room and people are talking. What is the subject matter where you come alive? What is the subject matter where you're like, oh, yeah, that's my thing. That's the thing that I am really good at. That's the thing I know everything about. That's the thing I never get bored of. Because that's how it is when you start off your marketing. You have to take so much fire, so much feedback, so much questions that pick the thing that you can do that with the easiest and then you can move on to other subjects later. Um, and don't agonize over it. You know, it's, um, it's a step one marketing it's not the end it's not full stop it's not final it's not what the whole book of your life is going to be about it's not the whole book of your business it's a flow and we're going to start with the easiest things to tackle which is whatever it is that you're that you find easiest that you get referrals for so then you have to figure out your message so what is your message about that thing so if we take for example maybe your thing is pain maybe your thing is lower back pain more specifically maybe your thing is anxiety like what dr toe was talking about just now so if that's your thing then we need to create a message around it and what is the message the message could be um anxiety is not something that you're stuck with forever or the message could be um anxiety doesn't need to rule your life your message is about your niche but it has to be uplifting inspiring and provide some kind of value to your audience and what gets you the best feedback? So what kind of messaging gets you the best feedback? So when you're talking with friends, with family, with your wider social network, at what point of the, when you're talking, do people really stop and listen and go, oh, you know, that's, that's really interesting. That's really connecting with me. It's not connecting with people because of the subject matter. What connects with people is your delivery and your feeling about your subject matter. You can make anything interesting if you're very, very passionate about it, because that passion will come through and people will be like, wow, this person really cares about anxiety. I want to know more about what they do. So when you've got your message, you need to then transcribe that message into a few different formats that we're going to then use for advertising. So how do we do that? So a lot of people will agonize over what their content should look like and sound like. And what this normally is, is they, they open up their laptop and then they begin to pace up and down. They pace up and down the room. They might redo their, um, you know, rearrange their laundry. You know, they'll do everything except be able to write. And that's because it's not totally natural to write. When you're passionate about something, your fingers actually can't catch up with your brain. And that's where you get block. So the best thing to do is to either open up a Zoom, you don't have to have your picture there, you don't have to have your camera there, and just speak 
to the recording device, whether it be your phone, whether it be Zoom, whether it be a transcriber, whatever it is. And then just answer four questions about your special subject. So one question might be, why should somebody use your therapy for this problem? The next question might be, how long does it take? The next question might be, um, you know, uh, do I need to do this for the rest of my life? You know, something, some questions that are frequently asked of you, so you know the kind of questions that people ask you, um, record them onto some kind of recording device. Then you take that recording and you put it through a transcription software. There's a lot of free transcription softwares out there. My favorite one is called Descript, but you can find if you just Google free transcription software, there's loads and loads of them out there and you transcribe your speech. Once you've transcribed your speech, you have content, you have text, you have lots and lots of long form content, which you would have to go through and make it grammatically correct. Once it's grammatically correct, you then have blog content and newsletter content. And then if you are able to, you can put together a short 15 minute presentation on your subject. So if your subject is anxiety, like Dr. Toes was, you have 15 minutes of content top five things that you didn't know about anxiety. Then you prepare some images that match that content. So if the subject is anxiety, you can pick a, a picture of a person, um, you know, stressing or not sleeping or something like this, something that represents the thing that you're talking about. And then you basically have all of the elements that you need that we're then going to put in the correct order for a lead generation campaign. So how do we do that? what do you need so to do your recordings uh, you can do it on a smartphone you can do it on um, a webinar software you can use zoom or webinar jam there's loads and loads of them up there out there but i think most people are comfortable with zoom you need a transcription software um, and i already mentioned a script that's my favorite one but there's loads out there you need somewhere where you can get images so there are multiple libraries where you can purchase images you may have heard of getty images or pixabay but my favorite is canva because canva is free to use and it comes ready loaded with loads of beautiful images and you can just search around for a good one you will need a mailing software of some form so um, a lot of people use something called mailchimp but my I really don't like MailChimp. I think it's very, very user unfriendly. And so I would go with something much more user friendly. And of those user friendly options, my favorite is MailerLite. Um, and then you would need a website or a landing page. So if you don't have a website, don't go crazy that you have to have all of these different pages. You just need one page that enables people to contact you if they want to. And for that purpose, WordPress and Wix are very good. And then, of course, you need your social media channels. So you need uh, to open up a Facebook, an Instagram, and a LinkedIn. If you already have these things, that's really, really good. If you don't, it takes about 10 minutes to open an account on each one and then verify your account and get running. And then you're going to need some budget. So this is another thing that people get really, really stuck on. They're like, oh, how much should I be spending on this, that, or the other? And I think a test budget of 50 or 150 pounds will get you at least one client, at least as a minimum, and a lot of information for your next campaign. So I would have a, a target of at least one client because that should cover the cost, um, but usually much more than that. So I just I just started a campaign for one of my clients. We've spent 20 pounds and we've generated three clients using these techniques. So what do we do next then? So what should now your content has to look and be presented to your audience in the way that will keep their attention alive. And how do we do that? So normally on a blog post and a newsletter, you will have a heading in bold. And what is the purpose of the heading? The heading is to capture the attention. That's it. That's the only purpose of the heading. So we don't want a heading that says something like, um, why you shouldn't worry about anxiety and why you should choose other methods. This is, no one's gonna stop to read that you have to think if somebody's scrolling through a piece of paper that heading needs to attract the eye and they need to absorb it almost without making an effort to read underneath the heading now you've captured their attention you have a subheading five things to know about anxiety or whatever your subject matter is 
an image and then a summary, three bullet point summary of you will learn blah, blah, blah at the end of this article. Then you have your content and I would not put more than three to 400 words in a paragraph. And then you separate your content into a new heading, a new subheading, new bullet points, a new paragraph. And this is how people read these days. These people have an attention span. I think it's about seven seconds. So a lot of the time practitioners have outstanding content. They can tell you in great detail what their therapy does and how and why, but they're not formatting it in a way that is uh, attractive to the modern consumer. So these are our platforms. Uh, I know that there's some feelings about Facebook at the moment, but I would say for, for the purpose of business, it's a necessary evil. So um, open up your platforms. Do not be afraid of them. Don't be afraid that you're going to do something wrong. A lot of practitioners agonize. What if I get bad feedback? What if people put a bad review? What if people say bad things about me? I find nine times out of 10, that never, ever happens. And if it does happen, there are tr strategies to handle that. So don't worry. <clears throat> so what is the goal of our activity? So a lot of people, um, are, a lot of practitioners, they what their end goal is, is to help people and make them feel better. And then what they do is that they transfer that goal, that practitioner goal into their marketing. So as long as they're helping people and making, feel making them feel better, they feel like they've achieved. And in one definition of achievement, they have achieved. But in marketing definition, a goal is the exchange of my investment of time and money to your contact information and ideally your money back. So that's what needs to happen. So we want leads from our marketing and what we and the way to get leads is to get forms. Now the good news is is that on all of the platforms that I'm recommended, it's possible to collect a form so people can request a consultation or an introductory consultation right on that platform and that form can lead be connected into a mailing list so that you can follow up with those people. Then you have other goals when it comes to online marketing. Interaction means more people will see your content. <coughs> Forwarding and sharing means more people will see your content. And ultimately this will grow your audience. And as your audience grows, as the people at the top of that marketing funnel grow, <coughs> so too will the people that pop out underneath. But Ultimately, at the end of the day, if you have 3 million people watching your content and not one of them are booking an appointment, in marketing terms, that is not a success. But if you have only five people read your content and two of them book an appointment, then that is a success. So this is the perspective to look at marketing with. Um, so what is the sequence? So now we have our content. We've recorded ourselves. We have blog posts and newsletter content. And what do we need to do now? So we want all of this to feed into each other so that it all happens automatically. And there is a way to set that up. And that way is called automation. So what we do is we connect Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram to our newsletter. We pre-write the newsletters and tell our mailing software when to send those newsletters. And then what happens is every time someone fills in a form on one of those platforms, they automatically get a series of newsletters. In those newsletters, they can request a phone call, they can attend another event, or they can book an appointment. All of those things are a success because they all mean that at some stage of this sequence, the person who has given you their details is willing to part with money for your service. So this is called a lead nurture sequence and, and, and this can all be automated. That's basically what we do. Um, I have pressed in the wrong direction. Um, so when you've been doing marketing for an extremely long time, as I have, you get figure out these little shortcuts, how to, how to make, uh, how to stretch out your content and how to get leads with as little effort as possible. And actually, if you can record one 15 minute video every week or every two weeks, then that's all you need to do to begin to create leads because you take your content, you put it into a transcription software, you put your transcription into a uh, automated editing software like Grammarly or some sort of auto correction software. You read it, you might have to correct something here, there, here or there. 
you then format it. So you have heading, subheading, picture, bullet points, content, heading, subheading, picture, bullet points, content. You schedule that onto your blog. You customize it and put it into your newsletters, which feed into your automation and you connect it all to your lead generation tools, which are social media, which are all free. Now, when it comes to paid advertising, you will need something called, uh, you need to use something called custom audiences, which is where you take your existing people that, you're all, that are already your clients, you upload them into Facebook, and then you tell Facebook to find you more of these people, which it can do, so clever, it's so clever. And then you always in your targeting, tick a little click that says engage shoppers in your targeting. Now. This is a bit fiddly, so if you are not so comfortable with technology, maybe get another person who, who knows what they're doing to set it up for you. But once it's been established, it's established. And all you need to do is up, up and down your budget and change your creative content. And another mistake that people make is they go, oh, we've given this message so many times. Like we've given this, we did that in January, we did that in February. Do we really need to do it in March? And the correct answer is, if it generates, repeat it. Repeat it and repeat it and repeat it and repeat it until it stops generating because you're not talking to the same people when you're marketing. You're talking to new people every single time and they haven't heard your message before. You have to think of yourself as kind of like a pop star singing the same song all over the world. So this is an example of uh, content production. You record your video, you transcribe, you make it grammatically correct, you convert it to blog post, you convert it to new newsletter. Very, very easy. And there's a similar set of steps to Facebook advertising and a similar set of steps to establishing your newsletter. But once you have this structure down, so the first time you do it, it might be confusing and fiddly. You might need to phone a friend, you know. But once you've done it two or three times, easy breezy, no problem at all. Um, so what do people agonize over? So a lot of the time when I'm speaking to small businesses, they really, really agonize. And a lot of the time, it's just about handling these uh, little agonies that they're having. So they agonize. Um, doesn't my content need to be really, really high quality? And this is the this is the thing in healthcare, particularly, because we have a lot of healthcare superstars, they're like, well, you know, I know a lot about how to help women get pregnant. But this person over here is a world-renowned fertility expert and who cares what I have to say about fertility the truth is people care what you have to say about fertility there's much more demand than there is supply and the people that are around you in your geography they will they are the ones that are going to see your message and the people that follow the gurus are actually the practitioners we're much more interested in what the gurus have to say than than normal humans we are we are here to learn from them and spread that message to the people that are able to interact with us so do not fear and at the beginning of something you need more quantity you need to put out content as as much as you can um, and then when you are fully booked and you have a space you can then go okay it's time for me to get picky now and to get picky I need better to reflect that pickiness in my content Another thing that practitioners worry about is advertising regulations, and there are ways and tricks around that. So, as look, but as long as you do not say that you cure or treat any disease, and you are just only educating people, you know, five things to know about anxiety, three things to know about fertility, uh, you know, massage for lymphatic drainage. Um, no one's going to bother you about that. If you do get advertising standards on you for any reason, just take down whatever it is that you've posted and they don't mind. I mean, they're not as horrible as we believe them to be. Another thing that practitioners go through is that they're really scared of putting their neck on the line. So they're like, oh my God, you know, my friends and family are gonna see this. They, they're not so keen on what I do. Oh, you know, what are they gonna say? What are they gonna think? And the truth is, who cares? Who cares what they think? They're not your customers. Whatever they think, they're thinking far, far away from you. And when you start to really thrive as a practitioner, uh, you'll care even less. Um, no pain, no gain, as they say. So you have to walk through that particular fire, put your neck on the line, and then the results will speak for themselves. And the last one is, what if no one cares about my niche? Uh, so this is very, very common. You know, somebody will be really amazing at, uh, you know, 
reducing anxiety, for example. And they go, oh, does anyone really care about that? Isn't it boring? And what I would say is the only person that it feels boring to is you. Because it is the case that when you're very, very good at something, it feels very easy to you. So you might think it's really basic and simple, but to the person whose life you're changing, to the person whose anxiety you're reducing, it's powerful. So don't underestimate anything that you're able to offer. It's all valuable to somebody and there is no shortage of people in the world to reach. <coughs> so technical skills are required for some elements, but if you don't have those technical skills, just hire somebody, just spend the money, hire somebody <coughs> to put the basics together for you. So what kind of budgets? Uh, and this is another question I get quite, uh, asked a lot. So if you are a, a, an entity with a, with a churn rate, so people coming in, paying and leaving, then you need to be spending about 15% of annual revenue. Um, and so whether that means something to you or not, I don't know, but that's kind of like the, the industry standard. If you're brand new and you've never done any marketing before and you haven't spent money on marketing before, then take advice from somebody who is very, very good at what they do and then test, do a test budget of 50 to 100 pounds per month for about three months. And that keeps everything safe and will deliver learning if nothing else. If you've been advertising for a while and you feel like you've got it down and you've got quite a good uh, kind of um, influx of steadily continuous new people, then take that same budget of 50 to 100 pounds for three months, so that would be 300 pounds, and get a pro in and just say, look, we're doing all of these things, it's working really well, are we missing any tricks? And let them tell you the things that you didn't know. Um, for example, some people are, uh, you know, uh, streaming to Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram. And maybe they don't know that there's a solution out there where you can stream up to all of them at the same time with one thing. Little things like this, because when somebody's working in marketing, they're at the cutting edge all of the time and they can just introduce you to those things. Um, and then it might be that you've exhausted all of your current angles and you want to expand your business or introduce a new arm. Maybe you want to do courses or packages or a product. Um, when you're entering a new market, pay for advice. It's really, really worth it. It will save you a lot of time and, and money down, down the line. So that's the end of my presentation. Um, if you have any questions, there is my email address. You can email me. There's my mobile number. You can WhatsApp me anytime. I might not respond immediately, but I will respond eventually. So, uh, and when I say eventually, I mean within 24 to 48 hours. Um, and that is uh, the end of my presentation. Thanks. Hi, Leila. Thank you so much for that. That was, you, you've made, I think for a lot of people, made something really simple really straightforward really demystified it yeah james just said exactly. excellent I, I totally agree because I, I think sometimes people like to add in a lot of mystique about marketing and yeah. secret sauce and all that kind of thing and, and what you're saying is really it's really very structural do the structure get the structure right you'll get the results and it's as simple as that yeah and don't yeah. worry if it's gone wrong because in yeah. marketing things go wrong. Marketing departments are insane departments. You know, things are going wrong all the time, all the time, all the time. So don't, don't get upset when things go wrong. Just move forward. Um, Angela just says, can we see your details again? Oh, yeah, sure. Could you sure. just share that? Yeah. Uh, where is it? Here we go. Yeah. Maybe if you're watching, just take a screenshot. I find that's... Here we go. Okay. Perfect. Okay, have you got it, Angela? Hopefully so. Hopefully so. Leila, thank you again. No worries. So much for coming on today. Look forward to seeing you again another time. Yes. Um, enjoy the football tonight. Yes. Come on, England. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. Bye. Take care. Bye, Leila. Bye. Okay, so as some of you know, we had a few technical issues at the beginning. So I'll give you the intro that I was gonna give you then. Um, just a background to those who don't know. Um, originally, we were gonna be hosting the um, speaker program at Holistic Health 
um, in Coventry this weekend and unfortunately due to the current situation we that had to be cancelled but this is how we've got such a fantastic lineup of speakers today because they were they were some of the people who were going to come along and give give it a, uh, a talk there good news is we will be back at holistic health um, at the rico stadium in coventry it's as easy to get to as as nec um, the dates for holistic health next year are may 22 and may 23 so hopefully you'll come along and see us there and listen to some of the speakers um, in person closer to the, that we actually have um, a retreat running in Tenerife. So if you can't wait to get out of the country and you want to go somewhere sunny, this September we've got um, the Big Well, which is happening. Um, it's got an amazing array of classes. I just really can't mention anything, but I thought what I could do is share with you um, a little video so that gives you a little um, glimpse of the, the, the venue as well. Um, just bear with me. And here we go. Okay, so um, if you want to find out more about it or let people know about it, it's um, if you search on Facebook for the Big Well, um, you'll find it. You'll find it. It's absolutely beautiful. Top training Tenerife. All the the, the top sports team go there. Stop that. Yeah, all the big sports teams go there. Um, to train. A lot of amateur teams go to their train. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, and the only other thing to say, I was going to say, is close to home. We're also hoping you enjoy the football tonight, whichever team you support, because we know there's um, people who are supporting both sides. So pick your team. Um, what we now have is a little bit of a tea break. Um, Oh, Angela says, where can we find details to apply? Yeah, if you go to Facebook, Angela, and if you do a search for the Big Well, um, you'll find it in there. Also, I think we have got a link in our last newsletter. Oh, you don't do Facebook. I completely forgot that. Um, so what you really, it, I'll send you, I will email you um, Elaine's details. Um, so basically just drop an, Elaine, um, an email to Elaine Willock, um, who's actually coordinating it. Okay, so I'll send you an email, Angela. I'll find her email for you. So we've now got a tea break. Um, hope you've got some nice bickies or whatever else you like to eat. We will be back at um, 12.45 with um, Dr. Alka, Pat Alka Patel. And something I think very, very relevant for all all therapists is how to be burnout proof. So um, I will see you back. Oh, Jane's missing the next one. That's a shame. Well, what you can watch the watch it on Facebook, Jane, um, on the live. Um, so see you all back at twelve forty-five. <laughs> 